What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host with the nasty one-two, Reckless Rex Ruger, along with the Alexis Arguello puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benjis, back with another one. And our guest is in here. And so now we got the pot of Durin. And I'm happy to say, man, first of all, we're going to get down to the bottom of his nickname, man, for sure. Daniel, do we got you, buddy? I'm here. There it goes, man. Daniel Bailey. And, uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, you just won your recent fight, man. So congrats on that. Hey, thank you for the support, man. I'm grateful. Sure. sure. And of course, uh, uh, we were just talking off air how we've had. Uh, now, remind me again, you did tell me one time, but how you're related to Randall Bailey? So our father's our first cousin. So me and him are second cousins. Okay. Okay. Yes, Randall's sir. Yeah, Randall's a great guy, man. I, and, and 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 listen, and we told him this when he was on here, man. You are one hell of a badass when you nick your nickname yourself the Knockout King. I mean, you're right. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure you putting yourself on the. But he definitely lives up lives up to the name every time. Yeah, and I'm glad you. And since we're talking nicknames now, uh, uh, they didn't really elaborate on Box Rec, but so we're big nickname guys. So DDSE, the dedication, uh, explain that to us. So one of my goals in boxing is to be the greatest defensive fighter ever. Okay. So when I when I first turned professional, I went by that that nickname GDFE. But then after I took my took a loss in my eleventh bout, I came back and I was like, you know what? I gotta reinvent myself a little bit. And I'm like, what's me? I'm like, man, I'm like dedicated, like I'm consistent. That's like my gift. Like, yeah. no matter what I go through, any ups and downs, I'm always at the gym. No matter if I, I've lost people and went to the gym that same day with everything on my mind and still put work in. So I was just like, yeah. the dedication. And you know, I'm a Lil Wayne fan. <laughs> oh, my son, I love that. Uh, yeah. You talk to one of the biggest Lil Wayne fans. I'm right? like, what a conversation right now. I mean, shit. <laughs> So, uh, uh, so with that being said, I'm sure Benji's would love to know, man. Uh, do you have a favorite Lil Wayne track? I probably won't know it. I'll fully admit, but favorite Lil Wayne song, man. I couldn't even tell you one, honestly. I can't because so every time, yeah, you, know, you could put on any one of them. Like I was just always. The, I was just in the car the other day, and my boy put on Blunt Blowing, and I said, "This song is just pure class. This is classic." Like look, the way. The way you gotta listen to a Wayne song is you gotta listen to it two or three times to catch everything he's saying, and you still miss something, and still miss something. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like and I feel like uh, uh, a a fun fact here though is that despite not knowing much of his music, I did attend one of his concerts, and I felt like I had to go because my daughter and her friend wanted to go, and they were kind of teetering on that age of going to a big concert alone. Right. You know, I almost felt like I had to chaperone a little bit. And, and it was when Lil Wayne was on that tour and he was battling Drake. You know what I mean? They were going back and forth, song for song. Oh, that's a – I haven't I haven't been to a concert before. But ever? ever like, I, I haven't ever been to a concert before. But I always said, when I do go to a concert, it has to be an artist that I really know the music. I'm not going to sit there and act like I know the music. Yeah. You know what yeah. else? You better off going to, like – very few concerts and just paying more money and be, having that shit be lit. Right, um, the real experience. I stand yeah. with right there. Yeah. So, so, uh, so I gotta ask first and foremost to backtrack a little bit. How did you get into boxing, man? Like we hear a lot of the same stories on here. It's always what is it, Benji's? Take it away. It's always it's always your dad got you into it, or you beat a lot of kids up when you was little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it for you? <laughs> Literally, everybody's been beating people up and things like that. But for me, uh, honestly, so I used to play football and I was really deep into it. Like anytime I played a sport, I got obsessed with it, right? Yeah. So I was like, I got tired of playing football and then I would kind of practice every single day and be working hard. And then guys wouldn't come every day and things like that. I'm like, man, what can I do? And it's like all based off of me and my, my effort. I'm like, I don't know. Then I saw the Rocky movie, right? And I got inspired. Like, I'm seeing this dude just going through all these training sessions and everything like that. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm going to be a heavyweight champion. Me not knowing I was going to be 5'8 and only 140. Yeah. yeah. That makes it a little tough, man, the size dimensions. Yeah. Right. <laughs> heavyweight champ. I mean. So I'm like, man, you know what? I'm a box. And then one time I was asking my grandmother because I was like, you know what, grandma, can you um sign me up for a football team? And she was like, yeah, just find a team online. So I'm going online, I'm searching, I'm searching, and then I come across a boxing program, and it's it said $40 annually. 
I was like, boy, you can't beat that. No, hell no. I'm like, you can't beat that. So I went, I promised, I went to the gym and I met Robert Daniels Sr. He's the um, Cruiserweight World Champion, first yep. world champion from Miami, Florida. And I promise you, I didn't stop going to the gym ever since. Do you? Go ahead, Benny. Because you was like an athlete and you played on teams and you said guys didn't show up. Do you like the fact that boxing's a one-man show? Like you kind of, you got to deal with the win, deal with the loss, like kind of just you? You know, it's crazy because the older I get and the more um, I experience life, I realize boxing not even a, a, a one-man sport anymore. Right. Like there's so many other factors involved if you want to be successful in the sport. But I do like the fact that most of the weight is on me at the end of the day. Most of the weight is on one guy for sure, but it takes so many other guys to make the mission happen. Mm -hmm. But it's not, if, you get, if you get knocked down, though, it's not like you could be like, look over at your trainer and be like, come on, bro. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can be like, hey, bro, help me out real quick. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, and and how about boxing idols when you're growing up? Did you put any guys on a pedestal that, you know, I mean, I, I, we all have those like sports heroes when we're growing up. Man, the the person who inspired me the most, honestly, was Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, I um, you hear him a lot. That's a good one. But it was it wasn't for the same reason that, as everyone else say because a lot of people say the flash and all that. But for me, I don't know if you ever seen um training um video they have on YouTube called the Training of Greatness, and it's basically him in um black and white basically, and the song is on um, the Eric Eric Thomas motivational speech, and they was talking about the um kid going into the water. Yeah. And he's like, you got to want it more than you can breathe and all that. Yeah. So that's the first time I ever seen like a real a actual boxer training. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I was, I don't, I got hyped off of um, the training more. Like I love training more than the fight sometimes. Yeah. Well, Floyd is also like a, a great role model because he's also been a, a, a very savvy businessman as well. So he's, right. you know, you know, he's really managed himself a very good career, a lucrative career. You know, I mean, so, I mean, he's done it all around the books, you know, I mean, he's, you know, he's been wildly successful. A great role model. Definitely. But if I have to say my favorite fighter, though, like the guy who inspires me, like out of everyone is Muhammad Ali because he yeah. just had something deeper than just boxing. He was just a, a man of great character. So, so uh, uh, we just saw last week, I don't know, I don't know what you like to think of these uh, events, but we saw another Jake Paul fight, the gimmick fights. Are you in favor of them or not so much into them? Anything to put more eyes on boxing because I know that'll bring more opportunities to me, like the real fighters. Because you know, um, me for one, I have a more a, a sighting style, so I know when anyone see me fight. Like for example, last week, people who never watched boxing see me fight and was like, "Oh, I gotta watch another fight again." Yep, fifth round TKO. Fifth round TKO, and I was in there in the pocket, being defensive and working my skill. Yeah, looked yeah, very it was good. A, it was a yeah. great showing, and I'm glad I didn't have an opponent. Like it was a homecoming, so it was. Of course, we had a, a opponent, but this opponent was a guy who had seventeen wins and was on the winning streak for a while. And he actually came in, and the second round, he, he caught me with some. He didn't hurt me, but I look, he was like, "Okay, you 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 serious business? You're not one of them yeah. guys. You, them guys, you know, you blow on them and they fall down. He wasn't one of those guys at all. Yeah, yeah. And so, so you fought at featherweight. Is that a way you feel comfortable, or do you anticipate ever trying out any other weight classes, up or down? So I box at 130 pounds. Okay. Uh, can you guys see me? No, there you go. All right. So I box at 130 pounds. Last week I had to weigh in at 128 pounds. Me and the guy had a um agreement at 128, and I was um. The reason why I went for the 128 thing was because, like, time was winding down, and it was like, man, I still don't have an opponent yet. So then it was like, man, I just got to compromise and lose those extra two pounds. But 130 is definitely the weight class for me. I'm going to campaign here for a while. I will win a real championship at 130. I will be undisputed at 130. I'm coming for whoever. I don't doubt it, man. I don't doubt it at all. And uh, uh, so uh, – as of right now, you know, you're, you're obviously active, participating in the sport. We hear a lot of uh, it being bandied about, about who the face of boxing is right now. You as an insider right now, who is the face of boxing right now? Obviously, everybody aspires to want to be, but who is that guy right now, uh, you know, for you that's really carrying the torch for the sport? Will you um, tell me what's your definition of face of boxing? Well, I don't know, but I hear it thrown around a lot I where guys like want to be like. Hank Davis. 
Uh, yeah, a lot of people say Tank Davis, but you always hear Devin Haney. It's the Devin Haney era. You hear Shakur Stevenson say it. You hear all these guys all, all make a claim to, you know, Terrence Crawford, Canelo Alvarez could still be the face of boxing. You know, you, you know, just, I guess, uh, to me, it would be that person that resonates with you, you know, when you think about the current state of boxing. You know, who's that, you know, who's that fixture? Who's that guy? Um, honestly speaking, it has to be between... I don't know if there's so many guys in the mix, honestly speaking. But if we talk about money, I think it's been not on here a lot. I think it's because of the knockouts. Right. So I I know with Tank, it's, it's more of a money thing. Like he got the face because he's bringing in all the money and things like that. But then you have Canelo who's in that same position. But Canelo is starting to turn the leaf of who he's picking to fight and things like that. But then we talk about guys who ask me fighting like top guys. Then you got to give it to Devin because I haven't seen Devin had a, a soft touch yet. Yeah. But yeah, then you got right. guys like Shakur who has the same, it's like he's taking the same road as Andre Ward where he's willing to fight anyone, but everyone isn't fight, willing to fight him. So it's just, it's, it's hard to explain. And then you got guys like Devin, David Benitez who was a sight in the fight and he's willing to fight whoever, but Can't he's running out of opponents as well. Yep. Can't get one. And so, so. Uh, I like that part of your nickname, greatest defensive fighter ever. So, but I want to ask you now, and, and I asked Coach Lenny, we had Coach Lenny, uh, the coach of uh, Richardson Hitchens on earlier today, and I posed this to him too. If you're a defensive fighter, you know, what is this difference where, like, we'll see somebody, like, let's say Shakur Stevenson's uh, uh, last fight. Uh, you know, uh, uh, people said a uh, boring, a snooze fest, the one with uh, 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 Dos Santos, uh, very boring. And then we see Jermaine Ortiz and Tiafimo Lopez. People say Jermaine uh, uh, ran all night, uh, a terrible performance, although he did throw more punches and land more punches than Tiafimo that fight. But, but what's the difference between what people will label a defensive masterclass as opposed to a dull fight. Some guys get credit for, for, for pulling off what people think is a dull fight, and they get credit for it being a masterclass. I believe um, when you look at defensive boxing, you have to think about it in different tiers as far as you got aggressive defensive fighters. Uh, and we'll call those guys, we, we call those guys counter punchers. Yep. Then we have passive guys um, who more boxing off of the jab and more ring generalship. Like I would say Canelo would be in the class of a counter puncher where he's stepping to you like master class for him would have been a fight when he fought Danny Jacobs and he was making a miss, but he was yep. also there to make him pay. Right. That's what people want to see. I think those are the most exciting fights when you got those fights. But I knew Tafima was going to get the um, the nod for that fight with Jermaine Ortiz, not because I thought he dominated or anything like that, of course. I think he – I felt like he didn't win the fight, but he didn't lose the fight because of the way Jermaine Ortiz was fighting because it was spots where he moved out of position and then he moved again. And I was like, oh, you fighting the champion. You can't do that. You can't yeah. move two or three times. Without throwing anything. Yeah. With those Shakur's fight, Shakur was landing his jab first. And he had the Santos didn't land anything meaningful. So it was really just a, a classic case of dream generalship. And I believe the difference between Shakur fight and the Ortiz fight is first he was the champion, he was the A side. Then he was landing a little, he was landing a little bit, and this guy wasn't landing at all. Yeah. This guy, Tefimo, was pushing the pace. He wasn't landing anything, but you've seen the effort in that. Yeah. But, yeah, so I don't know. It's like, it's just, no, I, I think that's a beautiful assessment, the thought of you can't – I like how you said that. Like, you can't move and then move again and then move again without throwing nothing. Like, right. That's, that's what makes people be like, oh, yeah, this guy's boring. You know what I mean? Not- yeah, this is boring. And I guess it really is about going out there and trying to get those pay-per-view dollars. And to a certain extent, uh, you know, when we think about that, you know, the, the, does it make a fighter think, I've got to be more dramatic, I've got to be more exciting, I've got to look for knockouts because, you know, that's how you get people to do uh, people's pay-per-view money? I believe guys got to believe they're de- in the defense a little bit more. Yeah. It's that simple. Like, for example, you'll see Canelo in there with Triple G and he's d up punches and punching back because he trusts his defense. You know, when you don't trust your defense, you're going to move out of range too far and not be able to come back as quickly, which makes people be like, man, I should have just stayed home and go to and, and, and had a nap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now... Now, and uh, how much wisdom did you glean from uh, 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 your cousin Randall? Uh, did he have anything to do uh, uh, with you boxing? Uh, you know, at what age did you find out that he boxed? Uh, you, you know, have you had interactions with him over boxing over the years? So me and him start interacting mo- mostly, uh, well, the most when 
after I took my first loss in the sport. Okay. And then I was like a little puzzled because my manager at the time, he went ghost on me basically. And because I took a loss, right? And then I was I was back in the gym the following Monday. And I took I took I would people would say I took a bad loss, but I know it was me being drained and things like that. But I was right back in the gym because I wasn't hurt, right? So I was ready to fight. I had two fights scheduled, and my manager would have me locked in for the fight and then would just go ghost. He did it twice, and then I was like, all right, I gotta put in my notice to get released. Yeah. So from that point, I was like lost and then i was like you know what i'm gonna keep working i'm gonna contact randall i'm gonna ask him what he believe i should do he said you're doing the right thing as far as keep working um let me make some com um calls and it just went went that way when, once i got back down to miami because i was living in tampa at the time i end up training at tropical park going back to my roots going back to school because i'm a psychology major at miami day college great and then i went to the league the TCL, the Team Combat League. I don't know if you ever heard of it. No, Team Combat League. The Team Combat League is a team concept, like a football team, basically, but in a boxing aspect. Okay. So you get, let's say you have a team of ten guys. Let's just say ten guys. Everybody competes, and if everyone wins, they everyone's round goes to a total score, and then that determines the winner for the whole team. Oh, that sounds fun. I wish there were more shows like that on TV. I would watch that every single week. The season starts the end of this month, March. So I was a part of the Dallas Enforcers last year. Okay. After that season, we didn't make the playoffs. After that season, I went went to Mexico, got about, and then I fought on the Red Owl uh, platform, and then I beat a prospect in Malik Warren, who was 7-0 and with six knockouts. Yep. I beat him, and then now I just came back for another victory. And inshallah, I have a fight April right after the league starts. So I'm just staying active as, as much as possible. So how active would you like to be in 2024? You've already fought in March. You already said you got another one coming up. How many times in total would you like to fight this year? I want to break. So right now I'm 13 and one. I, I want to get at least six, at least six fights. I want to break that. When you start making money in the sport, once you get that 20, 20 wins, like yeah. around that column. And I yeah. feel like I'm 27 years old now. So this like that. I'm not even hitting my prime yet. I still see myself getting better and better. So I just yeah. want to stay active as much as I can because, you know, time doesn't, it's undefeated. And I don't want to get old, especially at the lower weight classes. You kind of age a little faster in the lower weight classes. You could be an older man in, in the heavyweight yeah. on division. Right. Just come, on, just come out and lay on somebody for 12 right. rounds. Right. <laughs> man, I be seeing them guys, you guys be like 40, 40 something years old. I'm like, man, they still hitting. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then, now, as a guy that's currently competing right now, are you able to stand back uh, from a fan perspective and watch any of your peers? And, 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 and who are you a fan of in the sport right now? I'm a fan of boxing, period. So anytime I see a guy go out there and display um, real craft and real skill, I'm like, yo, I'm like, like I hit someone up. I don't care. I'm, I'm very humble in my approach. I would hit someone up and be like, bro, how did you do that? Like, yeah. uh, what? I don't even ask how you do. I just say, what type of training or drills have you been doing to, to perfect that? Because I know I can't get the same results you can, but I know if I train my train and do that same drill, I can create something for myself. Right. Do you, right. Feel, do you feel like boxing will like always be a part of your life? Like I know you said you mentioned you're 27, but you know, have you thought about what life looks like after boxing? Like you mentioned going to college. I mean, you know, have you thought that far ahead? Um, honestly speaking, after boxing, after I retire from boxing, I want to. Of course, I'm gonna make some like um, Floyd say, make smart investments, and things sure. like that. Get, Got it. I'm investing in myself right now, as far as college and everything. I want to just give back to my community. Maybe open up, not even maybe. Inshallah, open a boxing gym where I could have inner city kids coming in, getting a view of of life for real. Because you know, a lot of times kids don't think there's more to life because they don't see anything more than their street. Some of them don't even see anything more than their video game system, which is really oh. sad. Man, the streets be so dead nowadays. Like you could drive through the road at any speed because nobody's riding bikes, nobody's throwing no. a football. Kids Nothing. are not kids. kids drive by the that you would play that when you were a kid, and it's a barren wasteland. Yeah. How old are you? I'm, I'm 51. 51. Say it again. I'm 29. Yeah. Okay, I'm so 51. you we we right around the same um area. Yeah. So we was right. I think it was like the last generation where it was like kids actually playing outside. Yeah, we was like the. You had a video game system, but you still but you, kind of did both, though. 
you would right, still like you, you got the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. If something fun was popping off outside, though, you were still more into that, though. You know what I mean? The, you know, right. We put the video game system down if something was if something was happening outside that was fun, you know? Yeah, I tell you, Daniel, uh, he's my son. The only father-son duo doing boxing media. You're looking at it right here. Yes, right. sir. Yeah, I mean, we got our thing going on here, man. Well, we're trying to get it going. You know, it's 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 a work in progress. You know. Yeah, but it's you guys just trust the project, the process, and you already know it's going to be big eventually. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yes, we sir. are. The process though, when YouTube wants to rob you of views and, sh and stuff like that. Yeah, I think yeah. sometimes YouTube is a little on the shady side, and shame on them if they are. You know, I mean, I feel like media in general is shady because even with um, they be like, man, I want to see the best guys fight each other and stuff. I'm like, well. It's hard to get the best guys to fight each other when there's no money in the pot because everybody want to scam off a of pay per view. Yeah. Like I'm like, bro, we gotta if we gonna support the fighters, we gotta really support the fighters. We can't go in um bootleg the fight. And yeah. Then look, be, then we make fun of on Devin and be like, oh, your numbers are low. Of course, because y'all still in the fight. <laughs> well, well, I also think too that uh, uh, you know that boxing sometimes you know it's still it still is marred sometimes by you know people tune in for a great night of boxing and it's unfortunate man but we still do see some really shitty decisions and some shitty calls and it, you know it, it is a you know no intent no pun intended it is a black eye on the sport though you know what i mean right. it, it sucks when you tune in for a fight you're all hyped up to see and we still get uh, shitty performances because you know what we just think of the fighters competing but sometimes the judges and the referee if they turn in shitty performances that's even worse. And they don't get penalized. That's the problem. Yeah. There's no penalty. Like, you, if you give a bad decision, nobody's like, yeah, we don't have to sit you down for a We're going to suspend you for a while. Nobody's doing that. And I think it should be suspensions with judges. Like, Amen. Yeah. I was right about that. You'd see him turn in a bad card, and then you see the same judge uh, two weeks later on the next yeah. week. Or least, right. Uh, and they still get a, a, a big it. job. I'm like. I mean, at least take that fight and show it to a, a, a panel of a couple other judges and have them, like, rule and have him have to validate why he scored the rounds the way he did, you know? Right. I, I have him re-watch re the fight by himself. Yeah. I, you know, I got to say that card in Saudi Arabia the, the other night, I would like to go look at the scorecards because uh, in that heavyweight fight uh, uh, between Joseph Parker and, 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 and uh, Zhang, uh, apparently, the comedy box said Zang didn't uh, didn't land a single punch in round twelve. I'm curious if anybody of those judges would have gave him round twelve, though. I I, I haven't actually investigated. No, I'm pretty sure it was a clean sweep of the championship <laughs> rounds for Parker. I would hope so because that would be the epitome of awful right there. <laughs> that, that's what, I didn't even um I didn't even catch that fight. How was it? Oh, Joseph Parker's on a real roll. I'm telling you, man, uh, you know, the, 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 these last twelve months have been great for him, man. He's back at no, top of the mountain. No. He beats Wilder and then he beats Zang. You know what the problem is, though? And we was talking about the um gimmick fights and stuff before. We right. saw Anu knock down Fury. And now everybody just thinks if you knock a guy down in a boxing match, you win that fight. Yeah. Right. Like, you have to do is achieve a knockdown, and now you're the winner. Right. Because you that momentum from that one knockdown, they try, they think it's going to carry out to the whole fight. Like, no, right. you have to win every, just like Andre Ward beat Sov um, Kovalev. And everybody was like, oh, but he got dropped. I'm like, yeah, but you still got to win every other round, too. It's, still yeah. like, it's a brand new round, no matter what. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what happened with the Zhang Parker fight the other night. Outside of the two knockdowns, which he did knock Parker down twice, he didn't right. win any of the rest of that fight. I guarantee you, after the fight, he was looking crazy like he got real, he really yeah, got robbed, he right? Got, he got robbed. His you, hit the, everything. Like, what? You, you hit the nail right on the head now without even seeing it you hit the nail on the head yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so this the uh so this the decision was announced he looked like he was astonished i guess he probably has to do that uh, for public perception i'm I, i'm assuming but i mean come on man you can't honestly believe that you really won that fight it, it, right in a, realistic, in a realistic world man come on i mean sometimes i know when he went home and he probably watched it for himself he was like okay i lost that yeah he just doesn't really He's almost 41 years old, though. I mean, you know, I, you, the, you certainly can't discredit the guy, man, for still. He, and he's a big guy. He came in He came in like north of 290, so he's a huge guy. You know, I mean, it's a you lot of weight to be carrying I, around. Nothing, nothing else. Yeah. But, right. Yeah, but the main, event was, it was, the main event was, and I don't know, uh, you know, a lot of boxing peers are very happy that Joshua beats Ngannou because it, the, it almost feels like, AJ defended boxing. This is not good. These MMA guys come into our sport here, man, and they start knocking off the top guys. Uh, do, do you feel that same sentiment? Do you feel like it's like you view that as like boxing versus MMA? Um, honestly, of course, because it's like, you know, it's always going to be that little 
my combat sport is better than your combat sport or deal i think that's gonna be until the end of time mm -hmm. yeah and one thing mma guys love to do is say oh, oh we could come over there and do this and that and fury made us look bad honestly even though yeah. it's just one knock down and he didn't he just you could tell he didn't really prepare for that fight no, he yeah. didn't. i feel like and what's how you pronounce his name and gondo and gondo i feel yeah. like he came up he he really started believing his own height for a minute mm -hmm. yeah and, he, and yeah. i think um it was like him believing in his own hype and then people saying oh uh, josh was on the way down that's why i was just like a, he was shocked i'm like nah yeah. that's what happened when you go in there with a, a boxer with pedigree who's yeah. been in the olympic games who's been a champion for years who's been in the limelight like for years and years now yeah. Now, if you were able to play promoter for a minute and you could have your way right now at this point in your career and you could sign a fight with anybody out there, is there anybody particularly that would pop into your mind? As far as me fight. fighting them or yeah. me putting on a card? Yeah, a dream fight right now for you. A dream fight for me would be Navarrete at yeah. 130. Yeah. I, I feel like that'll be. You guys don't you know, getting thrown around a lot. Another guy doesn't get called out a lot. Yep. You know, it's crazy because. So far, I've been seeing guys um, say, well, Navarrete, this how you know they don't really want to fight him. They say, oh, Navarrete, he's, um, you know, he's going up to 135, but if he wants to, like, don't say yeah. if he wants to, say if I want to fight. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, that's their easy out right there. <laughs> right? It's, oh, you know, he's going up to, this man, I haven't heard this man say one time he's going up to 135. He don't even speak English. Yeah. He didn't say that. He's no, got a, go ahead. Got a Got a walkie style, but I think he's definitely like pretty beatable for like a guy that's slick, right? Yeah. A guy who's slick and a guy with some punch resistance, of course. You right. gotta have a little bit, um, you gotta be a little durable for that guy because he's gonna try to rough house you and everything like that. Yeah. But you gotta have a mindset like I'm pushing guys like that. For example, in my fight last week, I was in a pocket with this guy and I threw some body shots and he went low, boom. And he thought that it was going to have me react. And I just kept coming forward. And I seen the life leave his body. He was like, hold up. He's yeah. still coming forward. Because here at, um, you know, I'm at Casado Sports with Herman. Coach Herman, um, yeah. he had, he's with, he's um, Louis Ortiz trainer. Okay. So Louis Ortiz is one of my stable mates. And I'm here. I live at the gym, actually. And the, the whole dynamics of training and sparring here and everything is, you got to have that grit in there, like. We not in there playing around like we sitting in there, yo. We getting like I've been in wrestling contests basically in yeah. some sparring sessions because I'm not letting anybody push me over anymore. Yeah, yeah so you really yeah. are living at the gym, literally, man. Yeah, this on yeah. my room. I got the mini fridge and everything like that. I'm not leaving until I become a real champion. Now, do you feel like? Now, do you feel like uh, you, you know under those conditions where you're living like a warrior, you're living kind of Spartan and sparse? Do you feel like that gives you more of an edge as a young fighter? Absolutely, because I'm, I'm I'm crossing out all those distractions. Yeah, and I'm sometimes like if I if I feel myself procrastinating, then I have a voice in my head like, bro, if you procrastinate, you know this this could be where you live at for the rest of your life. Yeah, like, this could be your you feel me? That's like yeah. this could be your future if you if you procrastinate and you don't do what you're supposed to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's hard to not want to give yourself those creature comforts, man. But I've often thought like, man, I do respect like living like a minimalist because we do carry around a lot of shit and keep a lot of shit around us that we really don't need. You know, on, what was crazier than Marvin Hagler just going to the fucking nowhere land and just like fucking going in the woods? Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. right. Like he was yeah, like when those guys went away, it was notorious. When Hagler went away to camp, that was it. You kicked the wife and kids goodbye, and you were gone for eight weeks. That was it, man. You didn't make a trip in to see the kids. You didn't have them get you have them fly out or whatever, man. You actually lived like crude like that, you know, no distractions. Right, I, man. I wish I was like around around that time. Yeah, just to see. Yeah. Yeah, it's an era that fits you. You know what I mean? Like that old school throwback mentality is refreshing. You know. Right, because man, since I've been here, it's like I've been so much more productive with um going with Islam and everything like that, like going to the mosque on Sundays and yeah. and going to school. Like I haven't missed any days on school. Then I train three times, like I train in the morning time. I go to school, come back, and then work out again. And then I go for a run or something like that. I go swimming. Like it just makes you stay on everything. It's interesting that you bring up the Islam, man. Like, what's uh, uh, uh like, what, what facet does that add? Yeah, uh, you know, how does that help, like, the boxing life? You know, is the spirituality? I think we asked one of our last guests this. Is the spirituality uh, a, a really big component for you? I feel like it's a big component for everyone. 
Yeah. Like I've seen people who like have rough lives and so they got a, a, a relationship with God, they life transformed. And you know, what I realized about God is that he'll put you, when you want to be great, he'll put you, he'll have to test you a lot. Yeah. yeah. So right. That's the main thing. Like a lot of people be asking for greatness, but they don't know it comes with a lot of tests. Like A lot, man. Of, tests. A lot of tests. Yeah. Right. So I think, just, can, I think any man can, uh, uh, can attest to that. Right. And you know, as a man, we just put in a position where it's like, we're going to be tested all the time, but we just got to keep, keep moving forward and yeah. having that belief makes, makes things easier for me for sure. And it makes me stay disciplined because, you know, it's easy to get off track. I'm from Miami and I live in Miami. So it's like my hometown now, yeah. but because I went to the army and lived in Tampa for two years, so I was away for eight years. So I'm a different person now. So coming back, it's like, I'm, is home, but it's like I'm different, so it's not really home like that. Right, right, right. yeah. You're a different guy. You're a different guy, right. man. And like those kind of years change a guy, man. Going and seeing the military and stuff, and and, and being gone. You know what I mean? Like it, it, you don't come back as the same person ever. Yeah. Plus, I think the spirituality facet, man, that keeps you grounded, man, because obviously you're putting in the physical work, man, but you need that you, you need that component for the other side of it, you know? Right. You know that mental side to keep it all glued together. I feel like once I um took a loss and I found I, I built a relationship with God, then I was like, all right, all right, now I'm complete. Not even as just a fighter. You know, a lot of people go, I'm a complete fighter. I would like to think of myself as a complete man. Got every every endeavor um crossed out. Like I'm dying on my eyes and crossing all my T's. At the height of your career, man, uh, uh you know, uh, is the big moment for you like when you're getting walked to the ring by Little Wayne? Is that what a sign that you've made it? When that, the sign that I made it. I don't That's know. Big. I don't even know yet. I just That's big. honestly, when I walk into the ring, it's like that feeling of it's like I don't I don't really care who I'm facing. It's just that I just care about how I perform. Yeah. Yeah, that feeling. But um man, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 by, I, I by the sounds of it, it, by the sounds of it, he's gonna know when he made it when he gets to move out of that room in the gym. Yeah. Right. <laughs> when, that fact, that, That's then you're, on, you're on the money. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's definitely big right there. So so uh your next fight again remind the people out there you just fought march 1st i just competed march 1st out here in miami florida um my next fight day is in the works hopefully i'll be announcing it soon i just have to get a contract you know i don't want to announce anything and then it's boom i'm not even yeah. fighting that, yeah. yeah they fall through a lot they do fall Man. through a lot. yeah i've been lucky on that end of the um of the boxing spectrum as far as i haven't had too many fights fall out yeah but at the same time, it's like, I don't want to jinx myself. I don't want it to start happening. If you're able to get all the fights that you want this year, you know, I mean, and you mentioned earlier in the interview, five, six fights, if you can. Do you feel like, it? you know, uh, you, you win all those fights? Do you feel like going into 2025, you would have to be having yourself right there in position for starting to talk about, like, shots at a world title? Oh, what do we do, lose them? I think that might have been him. Yeah, it said he left the call. I think he'll be able to come right back in, though. Yeah. Awesome talk, though, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And just really uh, good young man. We'll get him back in here. We got to at least give him a proper goodbye, man. But, uh, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man. He comes from, uh, I mean, come on, man. Anybody in the bloodlines of the great Randall knockout King Bailey? Forget about it, man. A legend. Bonafide legend. Waiting patiently to see if he's going to pull back through. Maybe his phone died or something. Yeah, it could have. Oh, oh there he is. There he is. Do we got him back? Sorry about that. Man. Yeah, phone. My phone died. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, man. Uh, yeah. I knew it. It happened during an episode once. Knew that. I knew that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, we were getting ready to wrap up with you. We didn't want to, you know, wrap up your whole Sunday anyway, but I'm glad you came back so we could properly say goodbye to you, man. But certainly, uh, certainly do keep us posted, man. Uh, and we would definitely like to keep in touch and do it again, man. Well, we'd love to have you back on. For sure, man. Thank you so much for the support and energy, man. I, I really enjoyed this this interview for sure. Yeah, we love it, man. Like, we love it, man. And it, it's important to us, man. You know, we try to go out there and 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 
you know, a spouse that we put out the best of boxing. You know, they're just conversations, man. We just like chopping it up with, with guys right. in a sport that we love. You know what I mean? And just keeping well, we're it. Friends with boxers. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, y'all got a friend in me for sure. I'm gr I'm grateful you guys reached out, man. We appreciate that, man. We appreciate you, man. And uh, yeah, like I said, keep us posted, man, and and, and come on to promote stuff uh, whenever you got stuff going on, man. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll talk to you guys soon, then, right? Yep, you will indeed, sir. Yeah, we appreciate you, man. Thank you again. Yes, sir. Y'all guys have a good one. All right, you too, man. Thank you. All right. Talk to you soon. There he goes, man. Daniel, and we found that out because when I saw it on BoxRec, I saw G period, D period, F period, E period, the dedication. Greatest yeah. defensive fighter ever, the dedication. I like that, man. I like yeah. that, man. You know, setting the bar high, right out of the gate, man. Right out of the gate. And once again, off the couch boxing, doing what they do best. You know what I mean? Throwing out lifelines and cementing relationships. Yeah. <laughs> that is what we do here, man. That is what we do. That should have been the that should have been the tagline. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just this is what we do, man. I mean, tonight, man, like look what we did, man. I would potentially we could have even done more, man. But like, you know, we've gone over to we've gone over to Ireland. We've gone over to England. Today we went back over again to uh to Africa. You know, I mean we're all over the place. I got some stuff lined up coming up. We'll we will be going to Australia. You know, what I mean we reach out to our boxing brethren everywhere, man. Nobody nobody's, is nobody's bringing you this boxing content right here. The long arm of off the couch boxing will find you. The long arm of the law. We are the boxing podcast law. With that being said, if you're not liking and subscribing and looking us up on Facebook, what are you doing? Yeah, go see a shrink. You've lost it. Yeah, you need to be on Prozac. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell and drop some comments in the like. Oh. Yeah, a lot. Liven it up, you know. Tell us what you, who you'd like to see, uh, what episodes you've seen that you enjoyed, and maybe you'd like to see back. Uh, you know, anything. We're open to suggestions. Do more of this. Do more of that. Have more trainers. Have more uh, uh, ancillary personnel. I mean, we would do that. And comment on there and tell me your least favorite thing about me. Yeah, tell me what my good side is, so I know, and I'll turn that way more. Which obviously they're both good, so that was a that, that was tongue in cheek. <laughs> but shout out Gary Busey, because I can go 15 seconds with anything. It's time to go get in the warm bed. Fuck yeah. this song, and let man. me say that if you want to be a champion, you gotta continue to oh and what I was gonna say, thank you to Daniel Bailey, first of all, man. Thanks for doing it, man. Amazing GGFE, greatest defensive fighter ever, the dedication, and he will go down as that. You heard him say it. Confident young man. Enjoyed having him, man. And if you want to be a champion, you got to roll with the gang.